Hey, it's Kat here and I'm so excited today because we are going to be making this gorgeously soft chenille super chunky blanket with no needles or hooks required, just our bare hands. I'm also celebrating hitting 5,000 subscribers and I'm going to give this blanket away to one of you as a thank you. <laughs> More on that later, let's get on with the tutorial. First, we're going to make a slip knot by taking the end of your yarn and crossing it over to form a loop like this. Then we'll take the tail end, which is the little end, and pull that through that loop that you just made from back to front, like this. So you're gonna pull that through, and when you pull on it, then it should form a knot, and that's your slip knot. This is the basis of the chain that you're just about to make. Next, we're going to make a foundation chain, which is going to be the start of the top of your blanket. All you need to do is take the working yarn, which is the long piece of yarn connected to your ball, and pull it through the loop that you just made when you made your slip knot. So pulling the working yarn from back to front through this loop, that's your second chain stitch. So all you need to do is carry on doing this until you have the length that you desire. I made about 12, you can do roughly 10, it just depends on how long you want your blanket. When you have done this, it should form a nice straight chain. You need to make sure that all of your stitches are not too big, not too small. Your stitches should all be quite a uniform size. And you are going to be working in the back of this, so you don't want them to be too small or tight. <laughs> That's the best advice I can give. So you want each chain to be about three centimeters or a couple of inches long, but however long you make them, make sure they're roughly all the same size. When you're happy with the length of your chain, this is roughly gonna be the length of your blanket, then you can flip it over and we are going to be working in the back of this chain and this will ensure that you have a nice neat edge. Now, when you start working, you are going to just leave the end loops. So just pretend that end loop doesn't exist, just leave it kind of out like a little ear coming out and then you are going to work into these little back bumps in every stitch. So in every stitch along, you see these little bumps and we're going to just take our working yarn and pass the yarn through the back bump or that loop and just pull it down so you have a stitch. And we're gonna do that all the way along, just like this. making sure all your stitches are of a similar size. These are all about two inches, just like the chain stitches were. If you want to do a little bit smaller to make the blanket tighter, you can, or if you want a really kind of looser look, then by all means do that. But just if they're all the same size or as similar as you can get them, then that will make sure the blanket looks fabulous at the end. When you get to the end of this row, you're going to then flip the whole thing back over again. And don't worry, this is the last time you're gonna flip, I promise. When it's flipped over, you will see that you've created a beautiful edge for your blanket, all nice and neat. And now we're gonna carry on working down the rows. Now you're gonna leave the edge loop out. You're not gonna to touch that one. So you're just gonna leave that out like a little ear for your blanket however you want to think of it, but just leave that one out and we're going to go straight into the next loop. So working like that, we're going to go from back to front and we're just going to pull through the loops as we did before. Now you don't want to make these too big because they will kind of loosen out. So how, how I like to do it is just kind of pull up rather than kind of pull right out and down and that makes sure that when you shake it, it comes together nicely. And it just makes sure your stitches aren't too loose because otherwise it goes a bit weird and holy. You just want to carry on 
just pulling these stitches up and just work your way along and then when you get to the other side you are going to work into the edge stitch but when you come back on yourself you're going to leave that out like the ear that we were talking about so think shrek ears or i don't know whatever you want but just leave those out to the side and then that will create a really really lovely edge to both sides of your blanket you're going to carry on in this way until you get to the end of the skein of yarn i actually have eight of these balls and it's going to make a blanket that is around uh, half a meter by two meters but you can make your blanket any size you want i'm going to leave a chart below so you can see exactly what size you're going to be having so just carry on until your skein is running out and then i'm going to show you how to join the next one When you reach the ears, so that end loop that is sticking out, you are going to just pull it down and knit into it, just like all the other loops on the row. So you're gonna go up to the end one and then knit into the ear. But then when you go back on yourself in the next row, you will leave that loop out. So knit into the second loop. I hope that makes sense. This will create a really nice, neat edge for your blanket. The way I join my next yarn is first I start by tying them together in a good double knot so I will tie it in a knot like this and then again in that same way and just make sure that's really 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 tight so it's not going anywhere. Then I'm going to take a needle and thread in the same colour as my yarn and I'm going to thread through the knot as many times as you think you should. I'm just going to go through about 10 to 15 times just to make sure it's good and tight and then sometimes I'll just tie that knot at the end as well and when that's completely done then I know I can then cut the chenille yarn down to size and then make it look as straight as possible and then that is it that's really really secure and that's not going to go anywhere. Now you're just going to carry on until you reach the end and remember to join your skeins with your needle and thread just to make sure they're extra tight and if you are using a table like me or you want to save a bit of space then you can just roll up your blanket at the end and you won't need much space at all it's really really easy to do. We're coming to the end guys this is fabulous so on your last row you want to make sure your stitches are longer than usual and that is because they are going to be laid across the blanket so if you make them too small then your blanket will look really tight at the end so make sure they're kind of twice the length of your stitches that you're doing you want to do this when you've got about four lengths of your blanket left that's when you want to do your last row and then I'll show you how to finish with that row.
When you do get to the end, you're gonna pull out that last loop all the way until it's just a tail, there's no loop anymore. And that is your final piece really. And all you're gonna do is just take that tail and pass it through a couple of times round and then you can pass it into the blanket. I normally just sew up that end, just make sure it's nice and secure and there's nothing sticking out. You can also do this with the other corner as well, where you started from. So there we have it guys. If you would like to win this gorgeous blanket, all you've got to do is put a yes in the comment box down below and be a subscriber of mine. And I'll be choosing one lucky winner at random and I'll send this exact blanket straight to you. This is a UK only giveaway. So if you are outside the UK, then I'm really sorry, but just subscribe to my channel and I'll show you so much more that you can make. For example, this amazing baby blanket video, which I will link here for you. I'll see you there.